All right, so I was given this photograph today from a, a friend who said they struggled with post-processing it and the waterfalls all turned gray and everything. So the photo that they, they put on Facebook and Instagram didn't look like this. This is the raw photo right out of the camera. It's Bernie Falls in California. If you take a look at the histogram, you'll see that it was shot at F22 for 10 seconds. Personally, I think that's a little long for a waterfall. Um, it may have overexposed some of the area that shouldn't have been overexposed, but I think three or four seconds is enough for a waterfall to get the smoothness of the water. Aside from that, if you look at the histogram, you'll see that there's a lot of area over here that's blown out, and that's right in the falls area. <clears throat> These falls and this falls and also the rocks in this area over in here is all really overexposed. This area, on the other hand, while it's not totally underexposed, is significantly underexposed. So you have, you have an imbalance in this photograph. Your eye's going to go right to this falls, and it's going to see that it's totally blown out. And I'm going to highlight these areas that are blown out to show you what Lightroom can do. Now in just a few short strokes with a brush and a couple of adjustments, I'm going to make this photograph a lot more balanced and a lot more appealing. So the first thing I'm, I, I think we should do is come up here to the profiles and let's try Adobe Vivid. And you can see that absolutely nothing happened. So let's try, uh, now see you, you take Adobe Landscape and that cuts out about 30% of that area that's overblown. But you still look up here, you still have a tremendous amount of uh, overexposed. And that information is lost, it can't come back. We're just going to try to make it look better. Next step, hit the auto button. That's taken care of most of that, and it's still, uh, it's not great, but it's not all muddy gray looking. It's just on the verge of it a little bit. Uh, that's because the whites have been drawn back considerably in the highlights. I wouldn't do anything else right now uh, to these falls. I'm just going to leave them alone for a little while. And I'm I want to come down here and show you something in the adjustment panel here. The chromatic aberration is checked. The enable profile correction, it's I knew that it was a Fuji. What happens when you use enable profile correction, the first thing that happens, it tends to overexpose the photograph a little bit. So I would do that in the first couple of steps before you do any adjustments to sliders because it is going to, if you wait till the end, this is going to overexpose, you'll go back up and have to repeat some things. I'm not going to sharpen it yet, I'm just going to go up to the basic panel and do some adjustments. We've already done the auto, so the basic adjustments have been done. Get a brush. I'm going to clear the brush by double clicking on the effects. That clears all the brushes to zero. I'm, I'm going to put the density up to about 75%. Drop the exposure a little bit. Maybe a stop. Drop the highlights about a stop. And when you drop the highlights and the exposure, you should probably just pump up the clarity a little bit because it, it gets a little bit fuzzy when you drop that. I'm going to take a brush, a good size brush, and I'm going to attack some of the areas that need to be darkened a little bit. So I'll come up here, and I'm going to darken this area over here. I've kept that density right where I want it. I'm going to hit the left bracket key and lower the size of the brush. Get some of this greenery in here. Come down here a little bit. Maybe knock that up a little bit. That looks okay down there. I'm going to leave that alone. Um, bump this up. Come over here. Get these rocks over here. And now this is totally overexposed, and, and because it's overexposed, it's out of focus. But I want to darken that so that you really don't notice it that much. 
it still looks a little bit a little a little bit muddy but there's not much you can do with that if I reverse that particular brush stroke and drop my density down to say 50 percent and just lightly brush over it it's a little bit better it's not going to stand out too much okay so that's how that looks and, and I think we've got some of the areas that really needed to be darkened about as dark as we want to get them Okay. still haven't touched the waterfalls yet and I may not I may just leave those alone for right now I come down here and darken that up a little bit you don't want to look too contrasty but you do want to make sure there's some contrast get a new brush clear the effects and push the shadows up quite a bit and when you do push the shadows up you want to push up the clarity somewhat and maybe a little bit of contrast and I'm going to bump the exposure maybe a full stop and put the density of this brush up somewhere around 80 get a large brush and come in here and bring out some of this shadow area. Now you'll notice it's it's overexposing a bit, but we can fix that. I'm going to drop the density down and capture the foreground a little bit here, just a little bit. I'm going to drop it even down farther to maybe 23% brighten up some of this greenery up here draw the eye towards the falls might want to take the shadows and attack those little pockets right there maybe the exposure will do that yeah just pop out those hot spots There you go. There. Those aren't so bad. Now you have a balance between the falls on the right and the scene on the right and a scene on the left. A much better balance than we had before. That was really, that's about really all I can do to this photograph. If I do anything over here and I'll show you, and I'm going to erase it, but if I create a new brush, and I drop my ha shadows and highlight, or my, excuse me, I drop the uh, exposure and highlights down. And I, let's say I leave this at 50%. If I come over this falls, see how gray that's going to look? That's just going to look terrible. So I don't want to do that. It, they're totally blown out, but I'm going to leave them like that. There's this huge spike up here. Just going to have to live with it same thing over here you can't really do much with it but it did bring out this and I think it gave it a much better balance than what we had but this is before let me take that off this is before <laughs> let me try to get rid of that and that's after. So I think you can see that even though this photo wasn't totally destroyed, it, it had some salvage value. Maybe just a bonus add-on brush here. I would go in, get a small brush, pump the saturation up a little bit, and just pop along here with the light. Bring some of that. Bring some of this rainbow out in the water not much and that's it now I would go down and sharpen the image and because it is a little blown out I'm not going to sharpen it too much put the masking up quite a bit if there's any noise in there I'm just going to pop that and that's it so I think having said that we've come a long way from where we started there to there so I hope you enjoyed this video 
and remember it's just three or four brush strokes I didn't change any brushes I just lowered the density of the same brush and went through the whole thing I used two brushes one to lighten this side one to darken this side and I think it gives it a lot more balance thanks for watching and don't forget if you're in the San Francisco area I have Doc Miles photo tours Yosemite in San Francisco and also the Loop Brothers Photo Adventures workshops. We're doing a workshop in the Eastern Sierras, October 9 through 14. That's one of our premier workshops. And one in Bryce Canyon and Grand Staircase Escalante, the first part of November. So check out our website, www.docmiles.com and www.loopbrothers.com. And thanks for watching.